Greetings. Happy Tuesday to you. This is Pastor Altina McCree greeting you in the name of the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we enter into your courts with praise. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this time of sharing. We need so many things today in this nation, in this world. I pray, Lord, that you would comfort us, that you would lift our heads today, that you would give us hope and let us go away from this place rejoicing in Jesus' name, amen. So on today, of course, we want to uh, first wish a very happy and blessed and anointed birthday to my niece, uh, Constance Jarrett Breen. Today is her birthday. She is the wife of my nephew, Pastor Joe Green and the uh, First Lady of Holy Spirit Fellowship Church and Constance, we wish you a happy birthday today. Grace to move forward in the gifts and in the talents that God has given you. We also want to acknowledge, of course, the death of our beloved first uh, Academy Award winner, uh, such a activist in the world and certainly loved and respected by all of us, and that is veteran actor Sidney Poitier. I stated last week that I wanted to pay a formal tribute to Bishop Pastor Ernestine Cleveland Reams on today, and I have so much that I want to share with you. I just want to, again, state that uh, her services have not, I don't believe, been scheduled yet, but we certainly want to pay homage and tribute to this great woman of God who was a trailblazer, who uh, stood for women in ministry when no one else would, who gave us all a voice, who gave us decorum. Uh, she was a classy lady and such a woman of prayer and faith. Pastor Reams had her 5 a.m. prayer service at Center of Hope every morning. And I tell you, uh, I knew her as a little girl because uh, the Cleveland family, different ones of them came to First Church of God in Christ in Aliquippa. And I served them. And of course, once I moved to Oakland and became uh, closer into her ministry, I remember when she started Center of Hope. And then I remember when she bought the building uh, that they're in now and how she, there was about maybe 23 members there, and she would walk back and forth across the pulpit and say, I'm going to pay this building off. And she would talk about all of the other properties that she was going to buy and the things that she wanted to do. And I tell you, I watched, I'm a witness, an eyewitness that she was able to do everything that she said she was going to do. But that came from her prayer life and all of the fasting that she did, traveling all over the country and over the world. And we bless the legacy and the memory today of Bishop Ernestine Cleveland Reams. I am so visible on Facebook, as you guys know. And even on Sunday, I posted something saying, if Dr. the late Dr. J.L. Richards uh, our beloved King Narciss, uh, Violet, Pastor Violet Kitely, Bishop Ernestine, Cleveland Reams, if they were still here, this city would not look like it looks. There would not be all of this homelessness and all of the rubbish and garbage that is at the homeless encampments. It makes no sense whatsoever. And if those leaders were still with us, it would not happen. They would make, they would go to city hall and stay there until the mayor and the city council members did something about the way this uh, first class uh, metropolitan city is in disarray right now. Can't believe the fact that the Catholic diocese, $880 million uh, edifice that they built right there on the lake, I can't even believe that they are allowing this homeless encampment to be right across the street from them. We just continue to pray. 
hourly that some way, somehow, God will touch the hearts of the governing mothers and fathers here and of our governor in Sacramento to do something to bring some dignity to these people. There are too many empty places here that people can stay. It makes no sense. But I want to go on into what I want to talk about today. Two years ago, January 2020, I remember putting on Facebook that I heard the Lord saying, fear not, fear not, fear not. Just the other day, I put on Facebook again, I hear the Lord saying, fear not. In January, 2020, right before I posted that, the first thing that happened that knocked us off of our seats was on the fourth Sunday in January, when we all sat in our churches and heard the news that superstar athlete Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven other individuals had been killed in a helicopter crash. And you wondered, oh my goodness, when the Lord said, fear not, it sounded like this was a good thing. It sounded like it was going to be a wonderful year. It sounded like God was in control and we were going to see great and marvelous things. Of course, people were saying 2020 is 2020 vision and how we were going to see things clearly and how we were going to be intact. Well, right after that happened, because actually I was blessed to go to Los Angeles to celebrate the 70th birthday of my favorite preacher on the planet, Bishop Noel Jones. And I was able to go down and celebrate that two day affair with the members of City of Refuge. During that time, I was also able to go to the Staples Center and you saw it on Facebook. I had many prayer vigils with just families and walking up to people and saying, would you like to pray? and forming a circle, and we prayed during the time of the Kobe Bryant tragedy. Right after that, we heard this little rumor about some kind of pandemic, some kind of disease that was going around that was coming from overseas. We thought a rumor because the president of these United States said, Oh, it's nothing and it'll be gone in a few weeks. Of course, none of us will ever forget March 16th, 2020, when the world shut down. Now we are in another crisis with another strain of the virus. And of course, we're hearing that it is getting worse every day. And so again, the fear of what is coming, the fear of the unknown, the fear, the thought, are we going to be locked down again? Are we going to have to be in isolation again? And so today I want to encourage you and inspire you to know that God is still on the throne the late evangelist Catherine Kuhlman would come on every day at three o'clock and she would say, as long as God is still on the throne and as long as your faith in him is still intact, everything will come out all right. And so first of all, when we talk about this pandemic, when we talk, talk about what has happened here and how we have been in this now, for literally two years. We talk about isolation. We talk about the fears. And so let's go to the scripture and first of all, kind of construct here how this fear has come upon us. And so the first scripture that I want to read, and we're going to read quite a few scriptures today. The first scripture I want to read is in Proverbs, the first chapter. And it begins at the 21st, 24th verse. 
And it says, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So isn't that good news? Because we know that we are trusting in the Lord. He's talking about how we disregarded and disallowed his reproof, how we have set up so many idols, how instead of giving the Lord his due on Sundays, we have found everything else to do, going to brunch, going to athletic events, going to theaters, doing everything else, but giving him the first fruits of the first of the week and the first of Sunday. We know that when we grew up, if you didn't go to church, you didn't go anywhere else. If you wanted to walk down Fifth Avenue, Matlin, Vicki, all of you that we walk together, if we wanted to walk down Fifth Avenue and go down to Isley's and get an ice cream cone on Sunday, we knew that wasn't happening if we didn't go to Sunday school and to church. And so we certainly as African-Americans have gotten away from our roots. We have gotten away from the standards. We have gotten away from the very things that our existence was built upon. And so the Lord is saying, when you get fearful and when you cry to me, you're not gonna be able to find me. Only the ones that hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear or evil. Now I want to go over to, of course, one of my favorites, and this is found in Isaiah. And let's just go and sit with Isaiah for a few minutes. Isaiah 43, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Then when thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, 
and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. It goes on to say, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say, it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know me and believe me. Before me, there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me, there is no savior. I have declared and have saved and have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans who cry in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. And so we see that God has spoken to us and said here that we don't need to fear because he has redeemed us. He has called us by our name. And he has promised that when we pass through the waters, that he will be with us. When we go through the fire, that he will be with us. And right there, let me do a little sidebar and let's do some absolute special praying for all of these families that are being affected by these horrific and horrendous house fires now. 19 killed in New York this past weekend and nine in Philadelphia the weekend before and the weekend before some others. Let us fast and pray for God to preserve these buildings to put water where fire would be because we see that so many innocent children are being fatalities in these fires. So let's begin to pray for that. I tell you, there is absolutely so much to pray for. Fear is a distraction. Fear is a diversion. When you embrace fear, fear will keep you from your destiny. Fear is the enemy. And we know that fear is not of God. My play mother in Chicago says all the time, Eltina, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Prayer and worry does not go together. Because we know that in Psalms 34 and 19, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. So we have that promise that God has given us that yes, they're going to be afflictions, but I'm the deliverer and I'm going to snatch you out of the fire. I'm going to snatch you out of temptation. I'm going to snatch you out of all of the things that would keep you from keeping your eyes on me. Now we're going to go to another one of my favorite scriptures and that is found in John, the 14th chapter. We are talking about today, not fearing. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, ye believe in God. 
believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And then Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you that you do not know me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how saith thou then, show us the Father? Believeth thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, and he doeth the works. And then, of course, he says over in the 27th verse, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so even at this time in our lives, and I tell you, for me, yes, I'm on here and I'm glad to be on here, but don't think that I am not going through like everyone else is. We talk about isolation. And I tell you, it is very difficult for someone like me who has always been busy. Started my first little popcorn sales business when I was four years old and then went on to making potholders on the loom and selling them in the neighborhood. Started making cookies for the sororities that would have the tea parties. And I would bake the cookies and they would purchase those from me. And then little Eltina learned how to make the colored tea sandwiches. And they would purchase those from me. I was modeling my mother's clothes at an early age, the clothes, beautiful clothes that she made, directing weddings and singing at weddings by the time I was 11 years old and by the time I was 17, catering total events. Matter of fact, it was a wonderful thing this week and we send our condolences to the Moy family and certainly to evangelist Cheryl Moy Hogg who buried her husband on last week. And I was able to see that service online, live streaming. And at the end of it, her brother, Pastor Douglas Moy, who recently celebrated 40 years in ministry, paid her a tribute there after they had uh, done all of the services and the gentleman was in the military also. He was an anointed pastor. And so after all of that, Pastor Moy, Dougie, came and paid a tribute to Cheryl. And he went on to talk about the wonderful couple they were and the wonderful wife she had been. And he went on to say that, Cheryl, what amazed me so was as his sickness would progress into different areas, he said how you stepped up your game. I had never heard anything like that before. And he paid her such a tribute. And he said in that, he says, um, not my father, but he said, I paid for Cheryl's wedding. 
and I had her reception catered and I sat there and I listened to that. And I said, now, if I'm not mistaken, that is the sister that Dougie called us at the last minute, called my former husband, Tyrone and I to cater that wedding reception. And so I got on messenger and asked um, his daughter, Diana, I said, ask your dad, is that the wedding that we catered? And she came back and said, dad said, that's the one. And so way back then, I was just busy, 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 came out here to California, catering, teaching airline school, travel, events planner for the Hawkins family, um, just busy all the time doing. Eight years ago this month, my the love store underground treasures was closed due to gentrification it liked to kill me because you know you think that if you keep your business beautiful and if you pay your rent on time that you're in good but i say to you as i said to many businesses back then if you don't own the building you really don't own a business because you've got somebody that's monitoring your morphine drip, that's saying whether you live or die, that's saying whether your business continues or does not. And so Mondays are the worst day for me. After the store closed, it was like just Monday. I just woke up with no purpose, no nothing. And that was the terrible day. Well, then I was asked by, First Presbyterian Church's homeless ministry to come and be the chaplain for that. That was on Monday. So now I had a lifeline. I would go to First Presbyterian every Monday morning, sit there and pray and anoint and counsel. And I would leave there and go to the Y, which was five minutes away. So here comes COVID. No more sitting inside now they just give the homeless a container outside which means nobody's allowed inside so that nixed my ministry there and then the ymca closed and so still now mondays are my worst day if i can get through monday it seems like i can make it and all of a sudden the lord opened this door for me to be on Facebook Live on Tuesday. And I'm so glad that I chose that day because it's a day of activity. It's a busy day. And so Monday, now I'm preparing for it and it's a lot better. And then of course we have on Tuesday evening, Sisters in Prayer for Vice President Kamala Harris. It's amazing how some friends that grew up with Kamala, were next door neighbors. She's like a play sister with them. And my beloved friend, Diane May, came up with this idea to have this Tuesday night service, Sisters in Prayer for Kamala Harris. And I believe we have on the Facebook some 2,000 or more women that have been engaged in that. Every Tuesday, at the 645 Pacific Standard Time, we do mix and mingle, which every other Tuesday, I'm in charge of that. And then we have the prayer service. And I tell you, we thought that that was something that we were going to be doing while she was running. But once the election was over, I said to them, this has to become a lifestyle. It has to become the same way that I conducted prayer vigils for former President Barack Obama. The Lord gave me an assignment to have these prayer vigils for him even before he was nominated for the presidency. And they went all the way until the end of his presidency. I even was blessed to go to Punahana in Honolulu to the school that he went to and lead a prayer vigil there. So this thing that we're doing
for Vice President Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden is a wonderful thing. And we have now added so much to it. We not only pray for them, but we have prayer request time where women from all over this nation and even as far as Honolulu are coming on with prayer request. And I invite you women, if you can become a part of that, you may not agree with even Vice President Kamala Harris being the vice president, but it's not about that. It's about how we as African-American women have formed a prayer chain and a prayer circle all around these United States. And we are hearing praise reports every week of how God is bringing home daughters that people haven't seen, has letting people call people that they haven't heard from, how God is healing, delivering, and setting free. And so you say to me, well, Pastor McCree, you've said a lot about not fearing. You read scriptures about not fearing. How do we get past it? How do we maneuver the fear that we have, the isolation that we have, how our lives have changed and how this is a new normal that the world as we knew it will never go back to being that. And so I want to read a final scripture and then just say a few more things. I continue to suggest and encourage you to purchase the book, The Prayer of Protection, that was written by Joseph Prince. It is a wonderful book that breaks down the 91st Psalm chapter by chapter, and you would be blessed to just have it in your home. And so let's just read that really quick. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even my high potation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And so again, I encourage you to fear not, to walk in the protection, to walk in the grace, to walk in the word of God, to walk in the promises of God, to walk in what God has promised to us. The thing that helps me day by day when I'm just looking at the clock saying, it feels like it's 10 p.m., but it's only 4 p.m. because I'm just sitting. What we have to do is begin to thank God for all that he has done for us. We have to remember all of the good times and treasured memories. 
I can remember times when I wanted to go to Washington, D.C. to the Congressional Black Caucus or wanted to go to some other event that I had been blessed to attend years before, inaugurations that I was blessed to attend. And I would just sit and say, but Lord, I thank you for the time you did bless me to go. I thank you for all the beautiful clothes and shoes and fur coats and jewelry that you blessed me to be adorned in. And when you think back and remember all the good things that God has already done for you, then you can praise him because you know that this is not the end. It is just a comma. It is just a colon that we will go on, that we still have more living to do. It may not be the living like we had before, but we certainly have more living to do. And some of you on here know that I have said to you, get dressed up, get up, get up, put your makeup on. Even if you're not going anywhere but to the dollar store, put your clothes on and look like you are victorious, look like you are a champion. I certainly have to say that to myself because sometimes when my driver is taking me somewhere, he'll, and I come out, he'll say, now, wait a minute. I know this is not the owner of Underground Treasures. I know this is not Pastor Eltina coming out here with this hat all pulled down, looking like first one thing and then another. So I say to you, let's rise up. Isaiah 60 says, arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is upon us. I encourage you today to plant a seed in this ministry, sharing and caring global network, plant a first of the year seed. I don't want to sound like Paula White saying, plant a first fruit seed. But all last week, I was planting first of the year seeds. And not only was I planting them, but I was naming them. And close to the end of the week, something came to me that you hear preachers say a lot of the times. And they say, I don't need it, but you need to give it. And that became very alive for me because I feel like the place of anointing that I'm standing in right now, that I don't need it, but you need to plant a seed for the first of the year. I don't talk to you all that are members, loyal members of ministries and you are paying your tithes and offerings there religiously, but I know that there are many that are on here that aren't embracing any ministry, aren't paying any tithes or any offerings. And so I encourage you today to send that gift. You can zell it, you can cash app it, send that gift to Altina McCree. I will take it and I will plant it and it will be a blessing. Right before we went on today, I got a WhatsApp from Pastor Bishop Eric Nicorsi out of London, England, where I'm blessed to go and preach many of the times. And he said to me, Pastor, we are buying land to build a school and to build a encouragement center in Ghana. And we are asking for your support. And so you see, I'm not taking seed and going to Neiman Marcus and going to San Francisco, but I am planting, you plant seed to me and I'm replanting that seed somewhere else. So it's a good thing to do. The last scripture is found in 1 John 4 and 18. And it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment and he that feareth 
is not made perfect in love. And so we don't want to be tormented. We don't want to just sit up and listen to CNN and MSNBC and all of these reports. Next week, we're going to talk about the spies report and how the 12 spies were sent and only two came back with a good report. We are decreeing and declaring today that greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. We are decreeing and declaring today that we can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth us. We know that God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And we depend on his word. And at the end of Philippians, the fourth chapter, it says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so we thank God for this word today. My son, Coach Dixon, told me when I first started coming on, I was coming on with a little song. And he said, now, Mommy, don't come on with that song because your voice is kind of gone and uh, that might turn the people off. But I woke up with this song and it was just going over and over, just playing over and over in my mind this morning. And so I want to close with that before we say our closing prayer. When thou, when thou walkest by the way, I'll lead you on the fatness of the land, I'll feed you. And when it's all over, a mansion in the sky, I will deed you. Oh, and the high place I'll bring down when thou walkest by the way, I'll lead you on the fatness of the land. I'll feed you. And when it's all over, a mansion in the sky, I will deed you. Oh, the high place. Oh, the high place. Oh, the high place. I'll bring down. Father, in Jesus' name, now we thank you for this time of sharing. Father, I pray that Whenever this message is heard, Facebook Live, Facebook Watch, Instagram, YouTube, whenever a soul watches this and embraces it and engages in it, Lord, that you will allow them to know that there is perfect love in fear. Let them know, Lord, that you have not given us the spirit of fear but you've given us the spirit of a strong mind, of power and of love and of a strong mind. Help us to know, Lord, that you are holding us in the palm of your hand. And you said, Lord, that if we're in the palm of your hand, that no one can pluck us out. Lord, we don't know what this week will entail, but Lord, we pray that you would give us grace strength, stamina to go through, that you would help us to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. We apply the precious and powerful blood of Jesus right now over our children that we are so concerned about going back to school and going to school every day with this new strain going to school every day with children bringing guns to school. Lord, children that are dying in fires and children that are 
sick and terminally ill. Lord, we pray that you would have mercy today. Bless the doctors, the nurses, the first responders. Lord, bless all of those. Stretch out your hand, your hand of healing, your hand of comfort, your hand of deliverance to those that are sick and suffering this day. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. Now go away rejoicing, go away humming that song or a favorite song that you know. Precious Lord, take my hand. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Whatever it is, let's go through the day humming something that will give us hope. In Jesus' name, now until next Tuesday, God bless you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your gates, and please, please, please pray for me and for my family. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you.